Hi everyone, in this topic, we're going to talk about qualitative analysis. So, for this chapter, you will learn how to identify and determine the chemical properties of an unknown substance by systematically reacting the unknown with a number of different reagents so that you can identify the ions through their color changes, any gases produced, and precipitation. So, the skills involved include making observations, recording data, inferring and forming hypothesis. In all, there are three key things that you need to know for this topic. You need to carry out the experiment. This is done during your practical. You need to write down the observation and you need to know the chemistry behind it. And this chemistry behind it is usually tested in your theory paper. So there are seven basic experiments and um, two of it, which is your redox and reactivity of metals, have already been covered in the previous topics. So for this, we are going to focus on tests for gases. In this video, you will learn how to test and identify these six gases. Ammonia, carbon dioxide, chlorine, hydrogen gas, oxygen gas and sulfur dioxide. How do I know if a gas is produced? There are three ways to know if a gas is produced. Most of the time, effervescence or bubbles will be formed. What happens when there's no bubbles of effervescence? Usually that happens when you decompose a solid. Okay, This is thermal decomposition. You will do this in semester 2. Or sometimes when you heat sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali, with an unknown substance. And this unknown substance is usually an ammonium salt. And this is basically your AAS. S A W. So this will be covered in test for cation. In this topic, you will need to carry out the experiment. Okay, as I said in the beginning, you need to carry it out. You need to write observation, and then you need to know the chemistry behind it. So how do I write down the observation? I will use the C S T. I will state the color the smell, and the test for the gas. For the colour of the gas, there are only three colours that you are interested in for this topic. Colourless, pale greenish yellow, that's for chlorine, or brown for uh, nitrogen dioxide. All other gases are colourless. You also need to note the smell or the odour of the gas. There are four odours altogether. The one is not written, so can you please write it down? It's a rotten egg smell, and this is for sulphur dioxide. Hydrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide are odorless whereas ammonia gas is pungent and chlorine gas will make you choke so it's called a choking smell. Please do not smell directly from the test tube because some of the gases are poisonous. So what about the test? You are required to perform confirmatory tests for the gas but before you perform any confirmatory test, you should start off with the litmus test. So what is a litmus test? You will always use red or blue litmus paper to test for the gas first and this must be moist. If there is no effect on the litmus paper, it's usually because the gas is neutral. If it turns to blue, it means that the gas is alkaline. If it turns red, that means the gas is acidic. And if it turns red and bleached, that means the gas is both acidic and has bleaching properties. So this flowchart you will use when trying to identify a gas. So first, you check for its um, acidity, neutral or alkaline. If it turns blue, gas is alkaline. The only possibility is ammonia gas. If it turns red, the gas is acidic. So it could be either carbon dioxide or sulfur dioxide. Then you will proceed on to confirm if it's CO2. If it's CO2, you should bubble it into lime water and CO2 will form white precipitate in lime water. This is because your lime water, which is calcium hydroxide, will react with the CO2 to form calcium carbonate. And this calcium carbonate is your white precipitate.
there is no precipitate form then you will want to test whether it's sulfur dioxide so you will either bubble the sulfur dioxide into potassium permanganate or you will place a filter paper dipped in potassium permanganate near the mouth of the test tube now what happens is SO2 will turn purple KMnO4 colorless why is this so? sulfur dioxide is a reducing agent while KMnO4 is an oxidizing agent so your SO2 will then turn KMnO4 colorless when there's no change in litmus it means that the gas is neutral and usually is hydrogen and oxygen so how do you test for oxygen gas you will insert a glowing spleen and the oxygen gas will relight the glowing spleen this is because oxygen gas supports combustion so it will relight the glowing spleen Sometimes the oxygen gas produced is not enough to relight a glowing spleen so you'll actually see the spleen glowing brighter so we will take that as a positive test as well now what happens if uh, it's not oxygen so you want to test for hydrogen gas you will place lighted spleen near the mouth of the test tube so hydrogen gas will extinguish the lighted spleen with a pop sound the chemistry behind it is hydrogen will react with the oxygen in air to form water and the pop sound. At the same time, the flame will be extinguished. What happens when the litmus paper is bleached? It means that the gas is chlorine. And chlorine, the reason why it's able to bleach the litmus paper is because it's both acidic and it's a bleaching agent. That means that the litmus paper turns white. That is all for test for gases. You will try out these experiments, the test for gases in your lab in, in, during your practical session with your teacher. So you have any other questions or you need a recap on the practical skills of uh, test for gases, please refer to the YouTube video on test for gases. Thank you. Bye-bye.